This is part five of Orgo Speed Review, and it covers alcohols, ethers, epoxides, and thiols. If you're using Paula Bruce's text, this is essentially an approximation of chapter 11. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge, but let's get going. For alcohols, you need to know lots of ways to turn them into um, an alkyl halide. And particularly an alkyl chloride, alkyl bromide, or alkyl iodide. Um, for the alkyl chloride, or alcohol to alkyl chloride, um, the most popular is SOCl2 or thionyl chloride. You can also use hydrochloric acid and ZnCl2 um, or PCl3 or PCl5, though those are pretty toxic. Um, for this, HBr is normally used. Um, PBr3 is also a good option. And for the alkyl iodide, HI or PI3, those two are pretty similar in what the reagents look like. Um, then we moved on to how to turn alcohol into, great, into a great leaving group. You're probably familiar with turning it into water, which is a good leaving group. But if you really need to bring out the big guns, you can use tosyl chloride or TSCl, as you'll see it. Um, it's a big sulfur containing thing um, that I didn't draw up. But the sort of moral of this story is it goes to OTS, which is a great leaving group. And then you can replace it with lots of other nucleophiles like cyanide. Um, this is an alcohol dehydration. Basically, you add a hydrogen to it, pull it off, and lay down a double bond. For that, you use something pretty acidic with heat. H2SF4 and H3PO4 are good options. The last thing with alcohols is to oxidize them. Um, if you want it to go to an aldehyde, you use a mild oxidizing agent, MnO2, pyridinium chlorochromate, or PCC, H2O2, or ClO2 minus. Most popular is PCC. If you want to strongly oxidize it to a carboxylic acid, you use CrO3 and H2SO4, K2, Cr207, or KMnO4 and sodium hydroxide. Um, the two main ones are the CrO3 and the KMnO4, the difference between them being that one is in acidic conditions and one is in basic conditions, which you would need if there was something else in your compound that was sensitive to acid. Say something on the other side of the drug had an alcohol in it and you didn't want it to dehydrate by that mechanism. Um, if you have secondary alcohol, all the reagents above will just make it go to a ketone and three prime alcohols don't oxidize. Ethers, this is the Williamson ether synthesis. Um, you start with, a one, with an alcohol, you pull off the hydrogen to make an alkoxide. With a base, you use a base for that, and then you react it with an alkyl bromide. It attacks the carbon next to the bromine, which has a partial positive charge on it, and you get this thing that looks a little like a stick figure bird. A good base to use in that is NaH or NaNH2. Sodium metal also works. Um, if you want to get rid of your ether, back to your alkyl halide and your alcohol, you add in an acid. HBr is popular if you want the halide version. Uh, you protonate the um, ether right here so that your leaving group is an alcohol and then the bromine attacks the carbon next to the positive leaving group which has a partial positive on it giving you that. Epoxides. Now it gets a little more fun. Uh, it's the triangle with the oxygen on it. Uh, there are two ways to make this. The first is for um, primarily to add Br2 in water. It adds a bromine and a, um, an OH to opposite sides of the double bond. And that's really important that they're anti planar because then the oxygen can do a backside attack and kick off the bromine, giving you your epoxide. Also, in a 
you know, really anticlimactic thing, just pop in MCPBA. Um, you want to break them? Well, you need to know whether you're in acidic or basic conditions. Um, if you're in basic conditions, it's an SN2 type reaction. Um, the nucleophile, the, there's no protons present. The nucleophile attacks the least sterically hindered carbon evolved in your epoxide ring. And you get that. Other good nucleophile options that can attack that are RNH2, alkoxides, um, alkynes, cyanides, and basically the negative charge or the lone pair on any of these would attack there and cause that sort of connectivity. Like if you had NH2 attack, this would be the nitrogen, it would have a hydrogen on it, and then the R group would be out here. Um, under acidic conditions, it's a little different because the first step is that you protonate the oxygen. When you protonate the oxygen, it causes a positive charge to be on the oxygen, um, which will have an effect on the electrons in your alkoxide. Um, carbocations are more stable when the carbons that are on are more substituted. Um, same with partial positive charges on carbons. They're more stable when you have a more substituted carbon. So these electrons between this more substituted carbon and this oxygen are going to suck over toward the oxygen and this can nestle down to a like to alleviate the positive charge on that which would be less stable with the partial positive so you're going to have more partial positive here so this lone pair attacks there you get the thing attacking on the most substituted carbon now this probably isn't a great example um, because it creates the same you know product as that to show you what it looks like when something that's not OH gets added to the most substituted carbon we used HBr um, you see it adds the Br up here you can't use HBr in here because that would be acidic conditions but in this um, when you're adding something that's a little different it would be over here not up here so that's the difference there. Thiols, really two reactions with that. Basically, um, sulfur behaves like oxygen a lot of the time. This is a nifty reaction. Um, thiol oxidation. Remember that you can oxidize something by just, you know, removing a proton. Um, you know, take two of those, add Br2. It makes that two sulfur compound. Um, that's not most important in organic chemistry. But this one's pretty nifty. Um, well, that might come back in biochem. But this one's pretty nifty. Um, you use sulfur as a nucleophile to make a sulfide. You add a base, pop off the hydrogen. NaOH works fine. Um, and then the S- minus can attack something that has a bromine on it, or it can attack an epoxide. One thing to notice is that um, you have an SH, you add base to it, you pull off a hydrogen. So this is acting as an acid and this is acting as a base. So you make the conjugate base. So you're in basic solution here. So when you add it here, it's going to be something that's adding under basic conditions, which means that it's going to attack the least hindered carbon. Um, so it attacks up here, the oxygen pops down. Doot, doot, doot. Then you get your sulfur and your two carbons. Um, then you add some water to protonate the oxygen. And that's it for alcohols, ethers, epoxides, and thiol.